What's up guys, Pedro here. And on this video, I'm gonna show you how to make some simple but quality cornhole boards like these right here. So let's get right into the video. Okay, so the first thing I do is uh, I try to pick out the straightest, uh, best lumber, try to get as few knots as possible in it, so on and so forth, uh, on the two by fours and on the uh, uh, plywood as well. Uh, when I get a 2x4 or when I'm at the store I look down the 2x4 like this make sure it's not swerving out either direction um, try to see if there's uh, turn it back this way same thing try to make sure it's not going out one direction or the other and also that there's not a twist in it because uh, you go trying to put something together and uh, the boards are twisted <laughs> especially when you're doing a miter cut it, you're gonna have a hard time. Spend a little time getting some good lumber because trust me it's worth it's worth every minute. For those of you not familiar with it, uh, there is a website called the American Cornhole Association. Uh, they have the dimensions for the boards, the distances between the boards, and all the rules and regulations. Anything you want to know about cornhole, uh, it's on that website. And I'll put a link to their website in the description below. Typically, you would use half inch uh, plywood, but this is for my boss and I wanted to make it a little heavier plus he said it was going to be staying outside so I used three-quarter inch uh, plywood and to compensate uh, for that I'm going to take a quarter inch off my two by fours um, on the table saw that'll give it a nice flat edge on the two by fours that'll uh, make it a, a good uh, connection um, for the top Okay, so I'm getting ready to measure and cut my cut across, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I mark, make my mark at four feet. I'll make it on either side. Four feet, and then I go uh, an inch and a quarter make another mark an inch and a quarter past there on the right because I'm using a skill saw and my skill saw from the side of the skill saw to the blade where the blade cuts right to that edge is an inch and a quarter I add that to the right Put me. Uh, I just put a board on there and line it up with those marks, and use a couple clamps. I'm sure it's right on there, because I'm not real good at cutting a straight line without a guide. So. I'll make me a mark. Oh, and by the way. Uh, I'll be 54 next month and I got this skill saw when I was 14 years old and it's still working very well. Now comes the fun part. We get to cut the hole. In these boards okay so you measure from your side find your 12 inch mark then you measure from the top of the board down to nine inches to the center of the hole six inches from the top is going to be the the top edge of the hole but you mark nine inches is going to be the center from 12 inches from either side and nine inches down will be the center of your hole then you can take a uh, you can do it this different ways, but you can take a compass and I got a drafting compass and you can uh, mark your hole, which I'm just doing this for the sake of visual. You can mark your hole and that's where it's supposed to be, right there. Okay. And you can drill a hole through it and then take a jigsaw and cut in 
you have to drill a hole, of course, the uh, a little bit bigger than the blade of your jigsaw, cut in and then cut it around. Now, I found this to be really difficult to get a really nice uh, round uh, hole um, with a jigsaw. Um, and I've made a lot of these boards, so I actually built a jig. Let me see, it's over here. If anybody wants to um, see how I built this, um, I'll do a, a separate video. But I built this jig using a pipe fitting, and it's exactly six inches uh, inside diameter. And what I do is I attach this uh, to the back side of the board, uh, right where the hole's supposed to be. I've already got the measurements and everything uh, for the jig. But uh, I attach it to the back side and I drill a hole in the middle of the board. And I'll, I'll show you in a minute. And just take a router bit with a flush cut, a router with a flush cut bit and run it around the inside of that thing. It makes a perfect hole every time. Okay, so I get my jig uh, flush with everything and attach my grips. And I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna measure again for the center of the hole so I can make a, uh, so I can drill a hole. Okay, so once again, I'm going to measure down nine inches and then across 12 inches, which is right here. And that's just so I can drill a hole in the middle of my cornhole. Okay, so if you're going to use a jig like uh, I showed you a while ago um, and a router, with a flush cut bit, you need to make sure that you measure to where your flush your uh, bearing hits the jig, and that the blade does not. Because if you if you don't measure it properly, uh, your blade will cut into your jig, and you'll have to make a new jig. Trust me, I've done it. Uh, had to redo. Uh, had to make a new jig. Uh, and again, like I said, you need a drill bit that is bigger in diameter than your router bit so that uh, you can drill into the board and then stick your drill, your router bit in there uh, so that it'll fit. Okay, so we're gonna drill a hole first. Okay, so next I'm gonna stick my uh, router bit in the hole. Make sure it's not touching either side before you turn it on. Put your router bit in the center of the hole then turn it on and pull it gently to the side till you feel it hit the uh, inside of the jig and then you just work it, work it around. And that is what I'm talking about right there. Okay, so I got this hole cut. I'm going to do the top of the other one and then I'm going to cut the sides for them and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, when you take your measurement, uh, keep in mind the angle of the board that you're going to be cutting. So it'll be long cut to long cut, 24 inches exactly. Okay, so the first, side, or first end piece came out perfect. And this is exactly four feet. When measuring my uh, sides and end pieces, I like to always measure from long point of the 45 degree angle on one side to the long point of the angle on the other side. OK, 
Okay, now that I've got all my uh, side pieces cut, I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue them together and put corner clamps on them. Make sure you wipe any excess glue off with a damp cloth. I like to put plenty of glue on there. Okay, so I'm going to pre-drill my holes for my screws. And I'm, I'm also countersinking them so I can fill in the holes. And I'm using three and a half inch uh, exterior screws. works a lot better to put one screw in this way and then one screw in this direction. Makes your corner a lot more flush. Now that we got the uh, base glued and screwed together, I'm going to flip it over and attach the top to the base. Okay, so I'm going to put plenty of glue. Put plenty of glue on here all the way around. I'm going to start on this side over here and I'm going to tack it together with some 16 gauge nails. Just tack it together and then I'm going to put some screws in it. Two inch 16 gauge nails. I can easily cover these little holes with putty with a wood filler. And actually do not need, now when you do this, the glue is going to squish out of the boards and just come back and wipe it with a damp cloth. You could actually just use these nails and be good, but uh, I like to uh, put some screws to it. I'm going to just go ahead and fill in the holes from the uh, nails and the um, countersunk screws and the next step is uh, the legs. The angle of the leg is approximately uh, 10 degrees. I have a template for both uh, standard non-moving legs and uh, folding legs. I'm using the non-moving legs on this set because my uh, boss said that he's leaving them outside and in place. And they're easier. Okay, so like I said, I already got my legs cut. I got the holes pre-drilled. 
uh, for my screws and I have some two and a half inch exterior screws and I'm going to screw it from the inside uh, into the sides. Okay, so I've gotten this board ready to the point of being sanded. Uh, so we're going to just repeat the process on the other board and I'll be back when that one's done. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and share it if you're so inclined. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit the notifications button so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Until next time, God bless. Y'all take care.